Hello everyone, my name is Tom, and welcome back to another mini Let's Talk where I have a quick discussion on a show I want to have a brief little talk about. Today I want to do an update talking about Milo Murphy's Law. Season 2 is underway after waiting 200 years for it to air in the United States, we're finally seeing some episodes over here. And we have for a little bit now, and stuff has been happening, so let's talk about it. One of the first things I noticed was they seem like they're going ahead with a romance between Milo and Amanda Lopez, which honestly I don't object to. They teased it in season 1, with hints to the fact that Milo and Amanda have feelings for each other, but now there's a lot more straightforward affection and expression. I'd much rather have a low-key but straightforward romance for the main character that doesn't follow the same will-they-won't-they they trope that Phineas and Ferb and so many other animated shows have done. And at the same time, this relationship, if you can call it that, doesn't detract from the characters involved, nor is it shoved down our throats as viewers. I'm not big on every single example of the show acknowledging Milo and Amanda's chemistry, but the beauty of this is the fact that it never overstays its welcome. So even if you don't like it, you can just blink and bam, you're good. Next, Doofenshmirtz is now a regular character in the show. Ever since the events of the Phineas and Ferb crossover wrecked Doof's place, he's been staying with the Murphys, adding him into the cast of the show. This also means that Perry the Platypus, Alka, and even Doof's star Vanessa have joined in as recurring characters. Although Phineas and Ferb haven't made an appearance since the crossover, the addition of Doofenshmirtz gives the show a very similar feeling to Phineas and Ferb, but in a way that feels more like a continuation of the old show than anything else. It really makes me respect the fact that Dan and Swampy have really built an entire universe around these characters, and all of them can interact. Like Doof with Dakota and or Cavendish is a grouping that has so much chemistry, and they are the perfect cast for B-plots. So far, Doof has been used mostly to develop adult characters that would initially only have Milo and his friends to build off of, and now we can see how all of these adult characters in the universe interact with someone their own age, who is also still technically a protagonist. It's also interesting seeing Doof interact with Milo and his friends, because it takes this out there character we've known for years and puts him in a different perspective. Sort of like what they did with Vanessa back in the day, but now instead of acting as a father, Doof is just the adult in these situations, which is a little different. Asking this wacky former villain who's trying to figure out how to be good act as a responsible adult around teenagers who are old enough to realize that adults aren't as all-knowing as we think they are when we're kids, that's a relationship that works perfectly for this universe and the writing style that Dan, Swampy, and their team have become known for. For me personally, the way Doof is used in Milo Murphy raises the question of once this show wraps up, will this be the end of Dan and Swampy's universe? Will they get the itch once again to come back and make more, or maybe they'll pass the torch to someone on their team to continue the legacy? Either way, with so many zany characters that still manage to be relatable, I can really see this world go beyond Milo Murphy the way it's gone beyond Phineas and Ferb. Very few people have been able to make good shows that can also stand out among all the other great shows coming out at the same time quite like this. As always, with these update style videos on shows I already talked about, I want to mention what we got going as far as story arcs go. Milo Murphy's Law has been no stranger to story arcs in the past, wrapping up a major one right at the beginning of the season. So it's not surprising that a new element has been introduced to the universe to tease a big angle coming up. To start this off, Dakota and Cavendish are let go from their agency and are now forbidden from time traveling because of their antics and incompetence from season 1. And as a result, they're picked up by a paranormal investigation group. This then leads to the introduction of aliens into the norm of the show, and we're introduced to a group of aliens that seems to specialize in camouflage. They use cloaking devices and shapeshift to hide in plain sight. The reason they've come to Earth is to study Murphy's Law, canonizing an in-universe science as to why Milo and his family is cursed with Murphy's Law using the explanation of negative probability ions. So as aliens, they gotta keep things airtight and leave no room for error or else they might be found out, and even though it's sort of played for laughs to watch these aliens be unprepared when everything goes wrong, it's actually kind of interesting to hear them explain some of the scientific properties of Milo and give some hard rules to how Murphy's Law works. But the last moment we've seen from these creatures is now that they've gathered all the data they can from a distance, it's time to move on to phase 2, which includes abducting Milo Murphy, which I assume will lead us into the climax of the season to build up towards the finale. So once again, if you're looking for a reason to get into Milo Murphy's Law, now you got a good plot-oriented reason. I highly encourage 
urge that if you're a stranger to this show, that you give it a shot. It's one of my current favorite cartoons, and among the best on cable, if you ask me. But as always, let's keep the conversation going. How do you think Season 2 of Milo Murphy's Law is going? Let me know in the comments down below, or you can tweet me at TommyPQM, or even find me on Instagram and Tumblr under the same name. You can also find the Roundtable on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at RoundtableVids. As always, be sure to give this video a like, share it with your friends, or on the web, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell to get notified anytime we post a new video. If you want to help us grow, you can become a channel member with the join button, or support us on Patreon to get your name at the end of every video, or even a shout out for anything you want to promote. Links down below. That's all I gotta say, my name is Tom, and I hope you have an awesome day. I'll see you next time.